Good evening. Welcome to the Theater of Public Policy. I'm Brian Jost of Fine Arts Programming at the College of St. Benedict and St. John's University. Welcome to all of you for our campus community and our general community. It's a very special night. I'm just thrilled that we have the Theater of Public Policy here. And it is sort of, it, this is the epitome to me of the excellence of a liberal arts education, where different departments come together and make an experience, a unique experience possible. So I want to thank our co-presenters tonight, which is the Eugene J. McCarthy Center for Public Policy and Civil Discourse, and my friend Matt Lindstrom. Let's give them a hand. With, without their excellent support, this would never have happened. I also want to thank the Minnesota State Arts Board through the Cultural Arts and Heritage Fund. That's the legacy amendment we all pay into. They support all the work we do at Fine Arts Programming, and tonight's event is no exception. Uh, after, there's an intermission tonight, but after the show, I want to let you know there is a reception out in the lobby, which you are all invited to, of course. The McCarthy Center has kindly put on. And you'll have a chance to talk with our guests and with the Theater of Public Policy out there. I hope you'll join us for that. Our two special guests you all know, Drs. Benninger and Hamaseth. I'd like to tell you a little bit about them. Dr. Benninger is completing her 10th year as president of the College of St. Benedict. She hails from Philadelphia where she received her doctorate degree in cognitive and behavioral psych, no, that's not true, developmental and cognitive psychology from Temple University, where she also earned her bachelor's degree. Uh, and, and you know, this is our great loss. Dr. Benninger will be moving on to Drew University as its next president in July in Madison, New Jersey. She lives with her husband, Ron, in St. Joseph, and with their standard poodle, Whimsy. Uh, Dr. Hemeseth is the president of St. John's University, a graduate in 1981, and he is the first lay president of St. John's University. He uh, was summa cum laude, degree in economics, and then went on to Harvard to earn his master's and doctor degree at Harvard University. He lives in Collegeville with his wife Elizabeth and their son Cameron. I do not have a status on the pets. Um, I want to opine for just a second. I want, to, I want, I want us to really to realize how cool it is. You know, I, I, I talk to people in my position all over the world at, at, at different colleges and universities. And the refrain is always the same. We don't know our provosts and we really don't know our presidents. They don't really engage with what we do in the arts. And I really want to think, talk about how cool it is that our two presidents are willing to come out here and engage in an improv evening to talk with all of us. Yeah. That is nothing short of special, and I feel very blessed that they are willing to do this. It is really great. Um, the Theater of Public Policy, who's here with us tonight, a unique idea. They take improv theater and combine it with big issues, with tackling big big, possibly controversial issues, and using improv as a way to get to civil discourse. So of course, with the McCarthy Center, Matt brought them to my attention. I thought, you know, this is a perfect way to highlight that melding of all the things we want to do on campus and connecting it to the arts. And I want you to know that the Theater of Public Policy has been very gracious. Perhaps you've had some engagement with them. They've been here for a couple of days. They've been in classes. They've been with the debate team. They've worked with the faculty and the staff. And to me, that's the holy grail, when we can bring the artists off the stage and into your experiences. Well, without further ado, I'd like to please bring to the stage Drs. Benninger and Hemeseth. And I, I jumped the gun a little bit. I also want to remind you to set your cell phones to stun and put them away, please. And now, please help me welcome to the stage the co-founder of the Theater of Public Policy, Tane Danger. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hi, hi, everybody. Hi, hi. 
Uh, this is so cool. This is very exciting. Uh, thank you all so much for coming out. This is very exciting. We're so excited to be here. Uh, my name's Tane Danger. I'm the co-founder of the Theater of Public Policy, uh, and I'm your host for this evening. So uh, as, as Brian mentioned, what we like to do is talk to some really smart people uh, about some big ideas and issues, and <laughs> uh, you guys can decide which one. Uh, <laughs> And uh, we like to talk to them, and then we have this team of amazing improvisers who takes everything that we talk about and brings it to life through completely unscripted improv theater. So everything they do is entirely based on whatever it is we talk about. So we'll see how that turns out. So uh, without further ado, uh, please help me in welcoming to the stage, uh, one by one here, the cast of the Theater of Public Policy, Carmen O'Halloran, Jim Robinson, Logan Martin, Joshua Will, Brandon Boat. All right. I'm gonna... That's gonna fall. Problematic. All right. Uh, hi. Thank you, guys. We it really is. Um, we are really uh, honored that you guys uh, took time to talk to us. Thank you so much. This is not. We have performed and been uh, part of a lot of college campus communities and. We have never really had uh, the welcome that we have had here. You know, this whole Benedictine hospitality is serious business. <laughs> uh, it's very cool. And then, uh, and then we've never had uh, college presidents well join us on stage like this before. So thank you all very much for doing this. This is very cool that they're doing this, isn't it? Yeah. Never had college presidents before. Oh well, I was I was trying to make you feel better. We had one, uh, <laughs> but no, this is the only time we've ever had two. Uh, so that's cool. <laughs> And this is the only time that will ever happen. Probably. Actually. This is the last. It's all downhill yeah. from here. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, so I, I, I'm going to open sort of with um, what might seem like a silly question, but it, I actually heard it from sort of a student uh, earlier when we were walking around. Well, sort, sort of a student. student. Sort of a student. I sort of heard it from a student. <laughs> uh, I was, I was uh, they were just, I, I, I said to them, you know, what, what exactly, how do you talk about what the presidents actually do? Uh, <laughs> and they said, I don't know, that would be a good question to ask them. And so I, I would just say, you know, help us. What, what is it that you guys do? What is your day job? The, I'm waiting to hear uh, this. The, the advancement people will hate this. Uh, I've been told by, by Kim Oates to never use this line, but people say that what presidents, do. Well, presidents do is they live in a big house and beg for money. But Marianne's got a bigger house, so maybe she should comment. <laughs> Clearly, we've already established that he's going to be the funny guy and I'm going to be the straight person. Okay. <laughs> I don't believe but, it. You, you know, guys get the comedy routine down. We basically meet with people all day long. You know, they tell us who we're going to meet with, and then we meet with them. And hopefully that bears some relationship to what we actually do. You know, we talk, to them, talk with them, listen to them, decide, make decisions about our corporations. These are corporations. Yeah, well, uh, we'll say more about that. So you all meet with folks uh, throughout uh, the day, and we were, it was very exciting. I, I don't know if this was on purpose, but yesterday we were here, and right, yesterday was the day uh, in financial terms, uh, metaphorically, that money from tuition would run out. And so right. the rest of the money for the year, uh, in theory, would come from, from people donating and giving and, and events and things like that. And so uh, I, I guess my question here is, what is the pitch, right? Like, what do you, what do you go to folks? That, is it just a tin cup that you guys <laughs> take and you jingle? Or? So, no, I mean, it's called Tomorrow Made Possible. And what it means is it's to help students understand that, yes, your families are paying a huge amount of money and you have loans, but there are other people that are making this possible. And that started yesterday. So... You know, if you look at our whole budget, then all of the money that we spend from today on till the end of the year is made possible by donations. If we were running just on tuition, not just on tuition, but if tuition were our only source of income, and if then our- Then classes would be over right that's now. That's it. And they're all like, right, okay, go let's home, go everybody. for that, right? That's right, so commencement's this weekend. Uh, <laughs> But it's out of your own pockets. So, uh, <laughs> I, I, so, but so when you go then to these folks, what is it? That, how do you pitch St. John, St. Ben's? What is the? What's the line? Why? Why? So, and I, I'm just asking you to sort of do your job, but for us and uh, be hilarious. Go. <laughs> <laughs> That's yours. <laughs> well, there there are sort of two different groups we talk to. The the main people we talk to are alumni, and alumnae, and I think for them, the the pitch is a 
pretty simple one. You benefited from this incredible education uh, 10 years ago, 30 years ago, 50 years ago. Uh, it's given you the chance to have a great life, to make great op make c contributions to your community. Uh, and you were able to do that because when you were a student, there were people who were helping support your education. Partly your families, of course, that's the biggest share of tuition, but the, the monastic community uh, at both St. John's and St. Ben's provided support for these alums uh, decades ago. And so what you're saying to them is, if you want to make this kind of education possible for the current generation of students, we need you to step up and help us with this. And St. Ben's is celebrating 100 years, so we've been thinking a lot about uh, you know, what that means, that we've been around for 100 years. And so what we've been saying to donors is that the world needs more Bennies. And we're not saying um, we need more women at St. Ben's because we think we're the right size, but we're saying, you know, what the, the women and the men who graduate from St. John's, the women of St. Ben's and the men of St. John's, they're um, of extreme worth to the world. And that if you commit to these two institutions, then you're actually changing the world. And that sounds lofty, but we think it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dennis. Uh, I, I'm going to ask you to get, so I'm going to ask you to be even, uh, be more lofty, right? Uh, so, you know, we have a lot of students here, and, uh, and I'm curious, because I think this comes up for folks a lot, uh, especially when, you know, they're looking back. I, I mean, I uh, have looked back at my own, and, and you sort of wonder, oh, why, why did I go to this school versus another school or whatnot? And uh, either you look at that, hopefully you look at that to some degree beforehand, but then even afterwards you think, why, why was my education maybe better or uh, worse than somewhere else? And why is St. John St. Ben's special, I guess, is the question. Why, why is it uh, you know, I'm going to ask, I was trying to be polite and be like, why is it better? That's kind of rude. But you would probably think it's better than most places. It'd be weird if you didn't. <laughs> Did you say that you were a gusty? I wasn't going to bring that up. Uh -huh. What are you trying to get me tarred and feathered here? <laughs> You're not a Tommy, so that's... Yeah. That's, that's something. <laughs> like, I'm like Switzerland of the Mayak. I don't understand. <laughs> Still Lutheran. I'm not sure uh, yeah. that qualifies. I, I know. I, I've Ham, had, Hamlin might be Switzerland. I, I've had this. I've had this desire to nail things to your door the entire time <laughs> I've been here. And see, Touché. they understand see, that. Well, they get liberal, it. Arts, yeah. liberal arts college. They yes. wouldn't work at Mac or Carleton. They wouldn't. Yeah. What are you talking about? I know. They wouldn't get it. Uh, what was the question again that I asked? Uh, it was why. What, what's special or what's different about St. John St. Ben? Well, one thing is that we're Benedictine institutions, and that's, uh, that's a way that we relate to each other, which you said you recognized when you came here. So we have values that, aren't, that transcend um, faith, even though they're rooted in a Christian tradition, but they transcend faith, and they help us agree about how we're going to you know, be with each other. And Bennies and Johnnies will say that's with them for their entire life, and it's with People like me, you know, I wasn't a Benny. Um, I am now because I have an honorary degree, but I didn't go to St. Ben's. But this will be with me for the rest of my life, and that to me is probably the thing that distinguishes us the very most. Well, and I just to be, you're being a little too polite. We're rooted in the, a Christian tradition. No, we're rooted in a Catholic tradition, the one true church. No offense to the Lutherans. <laughs> just just wow. to be straight up about that. You so went there, so there huh? So that, that, that's for my monastic friends out there. You, I just feel like you've got this chip on your shoulder for being the no first non-monastic president that you're required to say that. You know what they say about being more Catholic than the Pope. Catholics are Christians. More, more Benedictine than the abbot. Okay, fair. <laughs> so uh, one, of the, uh, one of the things that's come up for me uh, in thinking, I did go to Gustavus, and uh, the, this, idea, uh, this idea of having a... a, a, a men's school and a women's school is, I don't want to say it's antiquated, uh, but it's something that we don't necessarily see very often anymore, right? Uh, we, we actually have two in Minnesota with uh, uh, St. Catharines uh, and St. Thomas, but we, and then we have St. John's. St. Thomas is co-ed. Co co-ed, sorry. <laughs> well, it's just St. Catharines, so, uh, but so why, I, I mean, it's just a question, you know, if somebody, why? why and, and, you know, everyone, it's obviously a, a co-ed crowd here, and everyone takes classes at both places, so why, why, are the, why, is it still, why is it still two schools? It is. Go for it, Michael. Are, are, you, on, are you on my board of trustees? Is that, 
I can I question. be? <laughs> How much can you give? <laughs> we'll talk. Well, all right, so, so why are we two schools? I mean, we actually, that question comes up surprisingly often. <laughs> but here's the answer. You know, we get the best of both worlds because we, got this, we have this great co-educational academic experience. The academic piece is all one. We have a single provost and classes and majors, all that's co-ed, identical across genders. But we also have programming that's for women at St. Ben's, for, for men at St. John's. Uh, the separate campuses have uh, created a kind of community that is uh, important at a certain point in the evening that women are supposed to go back to St. Ben's. <laughs> and I, I know nothing about whether that's actually true and I don't want to know. But the men stay well, at St. John's. Was that true when you were here? <laughs> For me and my friends, yeah, alas, yes. <laughs> Sadly. No, that's not permission to violate those curfews. No, but so when the women go home, they get to go back to St. Ben's and they have an experience with women. There's a kind of bonding camaraderie that's created. Uh, the same thing happens in the dorms for the men. They're all together and there's a certain kind of community that's created there. And that's not, that's not true to other places. You walked out the hall, you can't run down the hall naked at Gustavus because there are a bunch of women. Yeah. Well, that would just be too much information, for, I think. That's not what they need to know. And the residents all smell differently, I understand. <laughs> Why are we getting so personal? This is very... <laughs> no, I think she's talking about the residents all... Oh, okay, I thank you. Each other, she's yeah. taking a slap at the Johnnies. <laughs> no, I didn't say which smelled better. No, I, 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 I think we know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's sandalwood and musk in St. John's. <laughs> uh, but what is, uh, is... Would you agree with that, uh, about the, that answer about the... Yeah, I basically agree, but since I'm the straight person, I'll get even more serious. Uh, I, well, that too, actually. <laughs> yes, I am. Um, but, uh, no, I didn't mean in reference to my... Um, You're breaking a lot of ground here no, tonight. I, I didn't... I, I thought she was straight all along, so I didn't know. No, since I'm the serious person... Okay. Um, I think, I think it's more than that. I mean, I think that we think we live in a post-gender society. We think we live in a post-race society. We think we live in a post-economic uh, different society, and we don't. And these are the one place, I think, in the country where students can think about that and maybe be more prepared. It looks like you're yawning. No, 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 okay. I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm not yawning. I'm thinking. I'm, I, I'm, 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 I'm chewing on a question, but I'm, I'm trying to go ahead, go ahead. No, so I think that, you know, our women and our men, when they're back throwing that football around or, you know, watching Scandal in the res halls. Wow, you picked the most, like, um, gendered, <laughs> like, examples I could think of. You know, they're, they, can all, they also think about, they can reflect on why it's different. Yeah. Oh. Like, why are there one, two, three, four, five men It's there? true. How is your comedy department here, by the way? I we have a great, we have great improv students here. We do. We have different groups of students who are involved in this. But we have one group called uh, Feed, Feed Our Starving... Attention Starved Children. Attention Starved children. Star yeah. children. Feed Our Starving Children. You know, you get it. They I know who it, I was I talking it. about. Yeah. Uh, they're really good. They're very, yes, yes, yes. Uh, so let's, uh, I want to talk more about this. So... Uh, about this, what uh, St. John St. Ben's prepares us for, because I do think this question about uh, are we in a post-racial uh, society or a post-gender society, and, and these are, that's a very serious question, and so I, how, did, how do you prepare people for thinking about that? That's a huge sort of like, and I'm sure you get four years, but I mean, it, it's not like here is the book to like figure out society, uh, unless you're a sociology major, where I hope they have that book. Um, <laughs> actually, it's an economics book. It's an economics <laughs> book. I mean, what is it, what is it actually uh, that you, how do you train that? How do you create that sort of thinking, I guess? How do you create the culture where people are thinking about that? Well, here's one way, I think, that, so when I applied for this job, a bunch of students, I met a bunch of students, and they said to me, when you, if you come to St. John's, Will you make sure that the men get to have some leadership roles in organizations on campus? And I thought, that's a strange question. And they said the women have all the leadership roles. So I asked the faculty, what's going on here? 
And the faculty said, well, the men are just so lazy, they don't sign up. The men, the women will do it immediately. You ask for leaders and they step up. And then the men, two weeks later, wonder why there are no positions left. So at St. John's, you can have some organizations that are for men only, and they get to be in the leadership roles because the women will not outshine them. Did you just argue an affirmative action post for men in some way? Damn straight. Uh -huh. <laughs> People are worried about men and boys not doing as well in society. That's what we're here for. Okay. Johnnies? That's very generous. The world needs more Johnnies, too. Yeah, that's good. We need more Johnnies right here. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have enough. Well, this is another question uh, that folks asked about, uh, was sort of thinking about the, the future of the institution. And, and I know, unfortunately, that you, you're moving to another. But I mean, help us think about where, where does this institution kind of go from here? You know, you're celebrating 100 years right now. And it's very easy to sort of reflect back on, on 100 years. But what's the vision for, for the next 100 years or whatnot? You know, what changes or what uh, stays the same? I mean, I, my vision is for us to be the best damn liberal arts colleges in the country and to be, thank you. Except for maybe one other one that happens to be out on the East Coast. I want that one to be pretty good too. Yeah, right I was now. about to say. But, um, Don't play this No, there seriously, Jersey. I mean, liberal arts education is, um, it's under threat by society for reasons of ignorance, in my opinion. And we do that really well. We are very good at melding um, being a broadly educated person with being competent in the world and be ar being articulate and um, being able to stand up to this kind of, you know, we're both liberal arts grads, you know, we can stand up to this kind of spontaneous conversation. You stand up, you act like I'm like in Russia right now, <laughs> like I'm. This is not like your average, it's like being interview. on Stephen Colbert or something like thank that. Thank you, that's very generous, that's it, overly generous, you're, but thank you're you. You're good. But, you know, our students basically graduate after four years with the ability to pretty much navigate anything. And here at St. Ben's and St. John's, they can also navigate gender on top of all of those things. So we're unique and we want to preserve that. And we want to do whatever we can to um, keep providing what we provide. I want to, oh, go ahead. Were you asking about whether we would ever become a single institution? Was that what you were hinting at? I was Be not. Co -ed? Well, now I am. Uh. No, the, the problem with that is, if we did that, there would only be one president. <laughs> and that would be a very bad policy. Well, I was. I mean, look I at mean, what you're getting you here. you brought it up, why, why, why do we need both of you right now? <laughs> I will confess, that is an excellent question. All right, because, moving on. You know, because, I mean, so you could come here, <laughs> and now you'll be able to say, any other time you do this, I was actually at a place where there were two presidents once, and that was the best experience right. I ever had. <laughs> so that's part of why we're here. Okay, thank you. And they have already hired another president at St. Ben's, so Michael is not going to be the only president. Sure. There's going to be two. Well, I mean, I think about, I, I, I have a theater company, and, and it's just, to me, it's like, well, what if we had a theater company, and we decided to buy uh, two separate theater buildings, and have two separate artistic directors, and then one, one troupe of performers who had to go back and forth between the two, and they took a bus to get there. Uh, <laughs> I, Do you know any other liberal arts college that has seven performing arts venues? I... I don't know. I have. I very, rarely, I very rarely count my uh, performance <laughs> venues at Liberal Arts. It wasn't in the Mayak magazine this month. Uh, I, I mean, it is a serious. I mean, I'm sure it's a question that you all get very. I mean, how do how? I, it's an opportunity, I would think, to say what what is it that having two folks leading these two different institutions that obviously are so close together does? How does it work? What is what is your relationship actually like? You don't have to look at each other when you do it. I'm, waiting, I'm, I'm waiting for Michael to explain. It is very special. <laughs> so, you know, it's not designed to run it. They didn't design the schools just so we could have two presidents. So that's not a bad idea. It comes from this single gender piece at the two schools. And then it just so happens that she can talk to the female alum, alumnae from St. Ben's. And I can talk to the guys from St. John's. Although not to contradict you, but St. Ben's has had a male president. Didn't work out that well, though, did it? Actually, no. He was great. He seriously, he was great. I'm, I'm kidding. How many I mean, women just presidents as well as have you, you guys had? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, come on, we just got the late thing started just now, so give us a little time here. So. Is it a benefit to have, uh, to, like, do you bring different things to the institution? As you can tell, we're remarkably the same, right? <laughs> I'm trying to help you make the case for your jobs right now. Help me out here. Well, no, okay, I will say one thing. It's always true, or it has always been true, that the presidents of St. Ben's and St. John's didn't start their jobs at the same time. So when I came to St. Ben's, there was a very long-serving president of St. John's, and he knew the ropes, and there was a, you know, there's a steady hand on the tiller on that, in that regard. And institutions don't have that luxury. And I don't know if Michael felt that way about me, but, you know, I was the long-serving president when Michael arrived. So there's a continuity that gets preserved even when there's change. And that's not true at, like, Gustavus, who's getting a new president this year. <laughs> they don't have an old president to, or, you know, longer-serving president to, to um, be there and sort of show them the ropes or be able to maintain continuity. Sure. Uh, well, uh, before we, we turn it over to the improvisers, I did want to get to one other thing you all started to talk about, was the value of a liberal arts education, right? Our entire cast uh, were, were liberal arts uh, trained, right? I'm correct in that, yeah? Uh, and yes, and, um, and so we're biased towards it, but I feel often, right, it gets, it gets knocked and it gets a, it gets a hard time uh, here and there. And, I'm originally, this, I'm really going to make the audience mad. I'm originally from Florida, and, um, it, thank you. Uh, and, you know, in Florida. We're a global institution. There you go. We appreciate that. Uh, our, our, go uh, our governor, uh, the governor of Florida, uh, proposed a couple years ago, right, this idea, oh, the state should only subsidize uh, degrees that are, have practical value, so, you know, uh, economics or, or, or uh, STEM-related things. And if you want to study sociology or anthropology, then you can go do that on your own dime. And obviously, liberal arts folks were up in arms and very upset, but then, I, and I agreed with them, but I was like, I don't know if we always tell our story very well of why liberal arts is as valuable as it Well, should. first of all, liberal arts grads earn more over their lifetime than grads of other institutions, and that's demonstrable. There's data that show it. And I don't believe I'm going to say this in front of a large room, but St. John's University is the institution, Benny's do pretty well too, but St. John's University is the institution in Minnesota where the grads earn the most. That's not our metric. That's not how we... Um, you know, judge the success of our education, but it certainly flies in the face of the notion that liberal arts graduates can't have um, an economically secure life. The data show that it's just not true. And why are they important, though, to society? You know, they end up serving in leadership roles because they've got a flexibility and a, and a, and a ability over the course of a career to adjust to new and changing uh, opportunities. They don't get. They don't have a job when they first graduate that they stay in for 20, 30, 40 years. They do a whole range of things. So that kind of flexibility uh, is important for society as the economic environment changes over the course of a lifetime. You know, improv may disappear <laughs> a year or two from now, and what? you might. Yeah. <laughs> do you know something that you, I don't you know? Sure. Well, I, st I studied economics, so <laughs> I might. Um, <laughs> no offense. This was very. He was a very good communications major, Gustavus. You know, so there's a kind I'm, of flexibility. And I'm not starving to death. Uh, <laughs> no, but you still get that check from your parents. I think that's a little bit unnecessary. <laughs> I wish. So, uh, so anyway, you were saying. Um, you know, and then there's another piece to the liberal arts. I think just th there's a benefit. You know, the economic piece matters a lot. I'm an economist. Of course, I care about how our students do when they graduate. And Marianne's very generous to note that St. John's has the highest rate of return uh, on its, its an undergraduate education, though it's tainted by gender complications. Which and tainted by right the now. survey, which isn't really good, but still. <laughs> OK. okay. Now, now you've undercut that nice compliment you no, gave but us. It's, it's, but that's OK. But I, even, I you hear know, you. even if the survey's bad, it's equally bad for all institutions. No. So it's, relatively it's speaking, I so think it's So we have some true. crappy data that so. proves you're great. Uh, <laughs> I don't think a communications major should be commenting about data at all, <laughs> frankly. Um, so. But let me, let's forget the economic argument. There, there's a benefit here, and this is, you all are living this out, of, of having a broad-based education so that you uh, can enjoy and appreciate a wide range of things in life. Others can do that as well, but certainly if the education works well at a liberal arts institution, you have an appreciation for literature, philosophy, theology, the STEM areas that you wouldn't necessarily have if you had a more narrowly focused education, which happens at a lot of places that are a little more vocationally focused. 
Well, I, on that note, please, a, a big round of applause for our guest here, your president. So yes, uh, please, by all means, thank you, thank you. Uh, yes, thank you. So, uh, so we're gonna bring them back in the second half of the show and they're gonna answer all of your questions. So we're gonna open it up to you all. Uh, but before we do that, uh, let's turn it over to the cast of the theater public policy. So as I said at the top, everything they do is entirely made up and based on whatever we just talked about. So uh, without further ado, please, a big round of applause for the theater of public policy. <laughs> Jacob, Jacob, come here. I couldn't be more proud of you. Thanks, Your Dad. first day, I mean, look around you. You see the trees, you see the lake. I went There's here. There's no girls. Well, <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not now, but there, there will be. Listen, listen, close your eyes, OK? OK, can you hear the lake? I hear the lake. Can you hear the, the wind going through the trees? I hear the wind. Can you smell that? It smells like bread. No? <laughs> Smell again, smell again, son. Ah, uh, musky hallways. Yes, that's what I miss. The yes. dorm room, smell. What else do you smell coming from the dorm room? I smell a father and son embrace. <laughs> if you want the girls to come. Oh, that's right. <laughs> okay. This is so exciting. We're home from our honeymoon, a Johnny, a Benny. We're gonna start our lives together. I'm gonna get on the bus and go back to my own house. <laughs> Thank you so much. I miss you. Sir, I, I just I need some guidance counseling. I'm having I'm having a real 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 problem well, then right now. Please have take a seat or I'll take a seat. You keep pacing. Okay. I, I, I need some. <laughs> okay. So, tomorrow made possible started yesterday. That's true. Okay. I really don't know what today means. <laughs> We're in the gap right now okay tomorrow is still possible but tomorrow started yesterday so that that means that's today you're not a liberal arts major are you <laughs> i want you to think about cosmology that that's a, that's the 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 the, the uh, where did you you didn't go to st john's no i'm what? sorry listen what listen. is going on i went out with a st thomas girl for six months i'm confused i <laughs> i there's there's I, can, I can't think of anything but but like cars and, 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 and jeggings and... and <laughs> Time is a construct, a social construct. Everything is a social construct, everything. Everything you know is relative or not. So the girl that I was seeing, I'm related to. Let's hope not. <laughs> so. Think you can be a college president, huh? Yes. I'll be the best college president ever. My standard poodle will will lead me. Well, Mabs, you think you can live in a big house? Yes. You think you can ask for money? I'll beg. All right. I'll beg strongly, though. Let's see what you got. Interview started. Alumni, come here. Started a Fortune 500 company. That's his wife. Gender is a social construct. <laughs> I like these guys. Make your pitch. We need funding. Tuition stopped today. We have seven performing arts venues. Six too many. No! We'd like one of them named after us, yes. please. Either that or kill one of the presidents. potty trash, so the potty trash performance arts center won't work, so we are going to have to kill one of the presidents. So I'm thinking Thunderdome? Thunderdome! The Thunderdome Arena. There could be dance, improv. Two come in, one come out. Do it. What do you guys think? To the Thunderdome Arena! Oh God. <laughs> Listen, um... I'm a, I'm a Johnny, and I'm uh, kind of used to having the women take charge, so um, <laughs> have at it, okay? Um, 
spank me or something, please. I, I don't. I, I, <laughs> Jenny, Jenny, I, I'm really excited for you to to, to meet my dad, um, but I need you to know something. Up here we have something called uh, Benedictine hospitality, uh -huh. uh, but it's also mixed with a little Minnesota nice, um, and so it. He can be a little confusing sometimes. Oh, 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 okay. Okay, oh. but but just you know, look him in the eye. Don't make any sudden movements, and, and we'll be okay. Uh, oh, 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 okay, Johnny. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, Dad, Dad, Dad. Ah, the new girlfriend. Hi. Delightful to see you. Oh, I'm sure we can find something better for you to wear. Ah. Um, ah. But I. Dad, th th this is Jenny. This is wh who I told you about. Yes, yes, the uh, girlfriend. Yes, ah. um, she she she's actually a, a theater major, uh, but she's. She's minoring in music composition. I am. Well, congratulations. I mean, it'll take a few years, and then when that doesn't work, you can find something better to do. <laughs> Dad, I, 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 I can't, I can't keep living like this. I, I just want you to be positive. Ding, the muffins are ready. <laughs> well, I like muffins. I mean, I don't know. This, this could work out, Johnny. She's only one of the best. Oh, I oh. spent a summer with the monks, learning to bake bread. Oh, it wasn't sweet enough, so I added my own little flair. Oh, wow. Is that maple syrup? Is. Oh, man. These are some really good muffins, honey. Tell, tell him, tell him. These are some very good muffins. Thank you. Try one first. <laughs> Tastes like chalk. All right, Jenny, be honest. That's my son. You're gonna live across campus from him. Well, I need to know a few things. All right, sir. He's weak. <laughs> He's a follower. He always has been. Can you lead him? I can lead him. I can, sir. I wanted to sign up, but she signed up first. Because I don't want my son to live in a household with two presidents. We just need one. Is that why mom's never around? She is around often as she needs to be. <laughs> We're out after curfew. Don't worry. Don't worry. I was at this thing and the president totally blew it. He said it's cool. Oh. <laughs> it's cool. That is so great. Right. Oh. I wish that there was a girl around. Because <laughs> it seems to defeat the purpose to be on the other side of 94 with just the two of us. <laughs> well, let's let's put out our musk and see if... <laughs> yeah, I, I, I brought my t-shirt. We are men! A, a, a woman approaches! Don't leave me by myself! Wait, where's the post-gender handbook? No. It's the, it's, the, it's the bar chart. It's the, yes, it shows, yes. But Income this, equality judged against years of service over the top of hair length. It's an equation. I'm an English major. Tell me what it says. She's going to be richer than you. Just talk to her. Oh. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I like your Mongolian barbecue. <laughs> well, we're kind of looking for something a little non-monastic. I can be non-monastic. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna try That's a double entendre. I took Spanish. Ah! <laughs> no me digas. Ah! <laughs> Gracias. De nada. Tu es mi amigo. Enough with me. Talk to me. Si. Sí. Ah! Es, es mejor. Okay. No, not mejor. No. Ah, no. Ah, no. Ah, okay. That's a, that's a, that a double entendre that ah, you do not need to make. Ah. Here we go. Maybe we should hang our own. No, entiendo. Entiendo. Okay, well, that's listen, so okay. Uh, oh, thanks. Yeah. Apparently, we can come here anytime we want now. Oh, that's wonderful. Right, and I should let you know this as well. I'm neither Catholic, 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 <laughs> nor Benedictine. Oh, my. I know. Why are you wearing that hood? Because it keeps my ears warm. Oh. <laughs> no, he's lying! It's a yarmulke! Yeah, I'm Jewish. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. I'm very proud of that. <laughs> I'm from Iran. I'm Muslim. Well, <laughs> that presents a whole different problem. I know. <laughs> yes, come in. Hi, I'm collecting for our school. Kind of school. 
You don't look like someone I recognize. No, we, we uh, happen to see that you're an alumni here. Yes, well, I there, am. because I'm no longer there, I'm here. Um, and I just want you to put money in this cup. From St. John's? I, I sent them a check a week ago. I know, but you know, it's kind of the, we wanted to have that personable, face-to-face -face guilt. Oh. <laughs> we are Catholic. <laughs> Come in. Thank you. Yo, you, you got a big house. Yeah, well, uh, I aspire to be a college president someday. And, uh, <laughs> I, I, I know you have to start small, and well, you know, this is a starter home. Can I have some money? Oh, you could be a president someday, too. That's, that's what I'm aiming for right now. I just, I, I just live in a one-bedroom apartment. Um, well, I don't know. I mean, I sent them that check. Why should I send more? Listen. In that week's time, I've heard some very unsettling things about what goes on up there. I'm, I'm, I, th listen, the future started yesterday, but, but today they told me to seize. But that was also yesterday. Yes. And I'm supposed to look forward to tomorrow, and I can't go back until this cup is filled. And, and winter just doesn't end. It's really a hard, <laughs> it's hard being outside. It's, it's. Can I stay here? Stay, stay in my big house? Well, yeah, it's big. It doesn't smell musky. And not DVDs lying all over the place. Sir, sir, the lobster stuffed tacos are ready. Ah, excellent. There's more than enough for one. You are so lonely late. I am. And I have been wanting an uneducated ward to come live with me and not really contribute to anything since his liberal arts education is only halfway finished. Are you a sophomore, junior? I'm not my third year sophomore. Tell the lobster talks. Don't tease him. If well, I'm going to eat them, that's all right. If, if there's any leftover, can I put it in a Tupperware container and sneak it out? Would that be OK? <laughs> So you want to be a philosopher. I want to be a philosophy major. Well, first. you know that philosophy majors make the most money of anybody. That's true, if they go to St. John's. The philosophy majors at St. Thomas are working at Starbucks. Now, I was talking to a valued source who claimed that that re research was flawed and useless. Is that true? It's flawed but useful. Ah, <laughs> fair enough. That's different. Fair enough. Different. M my favorite philosopher is uh, Immanuel Kant. Can you explain some of his philosophies to me? I'd like to, but I think that my lobster bisque is about to boil over. Oh, of course. Um, you know what? I should just come clean with you. I, uh, I was an econ major. I'm a college president now. Oh. Come on. Not that bad. When can we have a college president that's not from the STEM world? You know, when can we have a, just a plain old, you know, somebody? Just a, just a guy that used to sling tacos. You know, that's the kind of guy I can relate with. Hey, <laughs> I'm that somebody. He's <laughs> my guy, huh? John, what are you doing here? Yes, I'll give this guy as much money as I want. I was in the neighborhood slinging some tacos. Yeah, <laughs> come on. He speaks unintelligibly and his shirt is stained. He screams college president. Fine, take it. I'm somebody that people can relate to. That's right. I'm not in some Harvard Tower. I'm down with the people. Serve me the tacos. <laughs> Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you all so much. We're going to take a 10-minute uh, intermission. Uh, so 10 minutes, uh, we're going to take an intermission, then we'll welcome back our two guests and open it up for you all to ask them questions. So uh, please, uh, come on back in 10 minutes, and we will chat with them, and then see some more of the theater world and policy. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, we're going to bring back on everyone, and we're going to open it up for you all. So uh, quickly, help me in welcoming back to the stage the Theater of Public Policy cast. And then a big round of applause for your presidents, President Hammerslav and Benninger. Oh, here, I stole your microphone. Uh, this is the part of the show where we're going to turn it over to you all uh, to ask questions. And we have, as I'm told, uh, microphones on the, the – we have uh, audience question microphones on the side of the stage. But what we like to do with our show is actually give you a chance to, to practice. So uh, what we would <laughs> – practice your questions. So uh, if you would turn to the person next to you and ask them a question – that you would like to ask of one of the two presidents or both of them. You'll have a chance to uh, get a little rehearsal and uh, maybe make a friend. All right, ready, set, go. So if you have a question, uh, we'll just need you to come to one of the microphones on either side of the stage. So uh, they, are, they are wide open, which uh, has me worried. Uh, so uh, please, uh, anyone, just make your way on over to the microphone if you have a question uh, for, for either of these folks or both of them, uh, and, and be brave. Because uh, uh, otherwise, I'll ask a bunch more questions. And we all saw how that went. Yes. <laughs> Okay, right there. And we can, we can line some folks up. So you can line up. And if you want to go line up on that mic, that's great too. So yes, uh, and then tell us who you are if you don't mind. Uh, hi, I'm Katie. That's who I am. And <laughs> hi. So earlier you said more Bennies are involved in leadership roles, but Johnnies make more. And I'm confused because I feel like those should be the like, matching up. Oh, interesting. So can you sort of explain why it's not matching up? Why do the less involved Johnnies make more money? Um, it's exactly why we're not a post-gendered society. You know, that's, um, that doesn't have anything to do with St. Ben's and St. John's. Although, I, I don't, you know, I think St. John's men deserve to make a lot of money. So I'm not suggesting that they don't. And he does, too, because then they get the donations. But, but it, it doesn't, it, it's not about us. It's about what society pays women. If society only pays, if, if, the corporate America only pays women 77 cents on the dollar, then it doesn't really matter whether you're a Benny or a Johnny in that terms, you're going to make less. And that's one of the things that's flawed about the survey too, because a lot of women in this country are choosing not to work outside the home more than men choose not to work outside the home. And those salaries don't enter into the equation. They don't have a, a literal economic um, salary value in our country. So it has more to do with what's going on outside than what's going on inside. Yeah, Kay. isn't economics flawed? <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> spoken by a communications major, just saying. So uh, just, uh, I'd have to give my economist card back uh, and I, my dissertation, my PhD would be taken away from me if I did not say that that 77 cent statistic is completely bogus. Mm -hmm. Just, mm -hmm. I won't go into an economics lecture right now, I promise. Uh-oh. But, but, but I have another hypothesis for what's going on. As yeah. you know, lots of Bennies marry Johnnies, and I think what happens is that the Johnnies who really haven't figured out how to kind of get their act together by the time they graduate, they marry a Benny. Benny helps get them straightened out. They go into the work world, they reach their full potential, and they make more money. And we benefit from that. Thank you very much, Bennies. 25%, 25% <laughs> of Bennies marry Johnnies, which is about the same statistic as Gustavus. There's no difference in the percentage of Bennies and Johnnies that marry each other. Now, what is kind of weird is we are two different institutions, and the notion that 25% of them would marry each other across institutions is pretty bizarre. But of um, men and women that go to college together, we're pretty much the same as everyone else. And I'm not an economist, but you can argue around that 70 cents 
77 cents issue in many different no, you directions. Can't. Yes, you can. <laughs> so then, side question, how are I mean, what Michael would say is that women choose different occupations that pay less. It has to do with their choice of major. It has to do with their choice of occupation. But there are many different ways that you can control for these things. And when you do control for these things, um, let's say reputable people disagree. So then how are you, uh, as the president of St. Ben's, preparing women to go into And by the, the way, that's not necessarily true in terms of what we make. Touche. <laughs> uh, so, so the question, the follow-up question there was just, you know, it was just what do you do then as presidents to uh, try and address this, to try and address the, the societal question? That's a good question. Michael? I encourage Johnny's to marry Benny's. Well, that's one thing. Uh, I see some happy couples out here that, where that's been true. There's some no. Johnnies I think be living on the street Benny? without their spouse. Did you marry Benny? I didn't have that opportunity. I told you, when I was, I was here studying, <laughs> I, st I followed the curfew, which all of you should do as well. Don't listen to them. So no, I did not marry Benny, alas. Uh, President, uh, are there things that... So to the extent that, um, you know, some of what Michael says is true. It is true that women and men choose different occupations, and that accounts for some of the wage disparity in this country. Um, but it's also true that within occupation, when men and women choose the same occupation and they have the same longevity, men on average make more. But what one of the things we're trying to do, I think, at St. Ben's and St. John's is to have students pick what they are really best suited to do and what appeals to them most and what's their passion and to try not to choose their occupations based on gender. And eventually, that should help even that out because, you know, there are men that may not necessarily choose an occupation because it's high paying and there are women who might choose an occupation that it is. So we need to break that down. Once again, I'm playing the straight person here. Okay, we've got a, we've got a whole batch of Thank folks you. lined up, so I'm going to go to that side. All right, is this, all right, it's on, sweet. All right, you talked earlier about how when there was a female president, or no, a male president over at CSB, and I was just curious as to what you two believe would be the general reaction and what would transpire if there was a female president at St. John's. Thank you very much. If it was Marianne, things would be so much better. We'd have so much more money. Johnny's would be happier. What can I say? It's not going to happen. I'd be working Drew on leadership Fuller. opportunities for men, basically. <laughs> Do you think that the, is it fair, like would that, would that, would there be, I mean there was obviously, uh, it was a, a move that you are non-monastic, so would that, I don't know, would there be a backlash to having a female president? It depends on how badly I screw things up in the next few years, <laughs> I think. Well, that's an interesting question because um, St. Thomas, as you know, uh, has a new president who's in her first year, a woman named Julie Sullivan, very, very competent, good president, uh, and some people thought that when St. Thomas hired her, they were just trying to one-up St. John's because they went from a priest to a layperson, but then they went beyond that and they hired a woman as well. So, But St. Um, Thomas has women students. Yeah, but still, it's they kind do. of a bold move. That's, that's right. Did yeah. you know that? Yeah, they do. So, yeah. <laughs> I just learned that. So, <laughs> so I can't possibly speculate what would happen if we had a woman at St. John's. I think the, my head would explode if, we, if that happened. All right, uh, I'm going to go back to this side. Yes, my question is, uh, what developments are you most proud of during your time here in, in your last 10 years, and what developments are you looking forward to in your tenure, uh, tenure here? And if you could snap your fingers and make something change between the two campuses, what would that be? Um, for me, it's hands down, no question. The thing I'm most proud of is that uh, we're more diverse institutions than we were 10 years ago, as far as the student body is concerned. And I'd love to see that continue. More geographic diversity outside the upper Midwest, um, more international diversity, more economic diversity. Those would all be fabulous things. And if you could snap your fingers and change one thing uh, going forward, what would it? A billion dollar endowment. Yep, same thing, <laughs> same answer. That would make your job very easy then going forward. 
Hi. So sustainability has been a huge theme on both of the campuses lately. And personally, I'm wondering when it becomes um, more smart to be cost effective as an institution or be sustainable as an institution. And from the sustainability, if it's more important to be like teach students to be sustainable themselves or I don't want to say force it, but to have a sustainable university instead. Oh. Um, that's a false dichotomy, um, or let's say it should be a false dichotomy. Sometimes people make um, foolish decisions and it's more costly to be sustainable. But over time, what sustainability means is that your model, it works and that it can withstand the test of time. So economic sustainability means that you operate a cost-effective institution. At St. Ben's, as we've become more sustainable, we've saved significantly more dollars. We have a sustainability director and she by far has saved more than her salary over time. So I think you're right that sometimes making sustainable judgments can be more costly, but done well, they're much less costly. I agree. Okay. <laughs> I will come over to this side. We'll probably only have time for the questions that are here on the lines right now, but yes, so right over here on our right. All right, I have a silly and a serious question. So first, President Binniger, I want to know, deep in my heart, if you know that by the student body your nickname is Mabs. Uh, it doesn't surprise me because <laughs> um, those are my initials and it's not after a paint store. And I kind of like that. Actually, I just wrote a piece, like a feature piece, on initials and what they mean. And I can add this to it. So I assume it has to do with my initials yeah. and it doesn't stand for something else. It does, it like, does. So thanks for answering my serious question. Did you just um, say it does? <laughs> Um, so my second question is, uh, by, sorry, I did my serious and silly one, but uh, what is St. John St. Ben's doing to be welcoming to LGBT students? You, you forced her to answer first every time here, so you go ahead. I'm being polite. I get it. I get it. He's a Johnny. God, you give me a break, man. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I would like to think that we are welcoming to anyone that comes to St. Ben's or St. John's. And I think the, the Benedictine hospitality that we take very seriously here, as, as our guests have testified, uh, I, makes it clear that we should respect the dignity of all individuals, regardless of race, gender, religion, sexual orientation. And I, I hope we live that out. And when I was here as a student 35 years ago, that was, you know, LGBT things were not really even on the radar. I mean, and, and I'm, I'm embarrassed to think of the kinds of jokes that I and my friends engaged in at the time. That world has changed completely now, I think. Now, that we're, you know, are we where we need to be? Are we, are we as, as good as we can be? No, but I think it's also important to remember that we have made a tremendous amount of progress, and I think the Benedictine tradition at St. Ben's and St. John's uh, is a very important part of that. Mm -hmm. And um, I would agree with Michael that things have changed. Things have changed since I've been here in 10 years. That being said, um, you know, we, we like to think sometimes we live in a bubble or, you know, we live in this sort of place where the world doesn't really encroach and we like to hope that, as Michael said, all of our students feel comfortable and welcome here. But the reality of it is the outside world does encroach and some of the members of this community still don't um, fully appreciate what it means to welcome all members of the community despite the fact that that's our ideal. I think one of the things that we both do that you don't, one doesn't see um, in this community is um, the amount of times the external community would prefer that we aren't welcoming in that way. And um, I think that it's very important to us to, to express what Michael expressed about the, val the values of our community to the outside to continue to make this place more welcoming. I would also say if there's something that we can do that we don't know, we need to know about it. And um, 10 years ago when I started at St. Ben's, there were many things that we could do to be more welcoming that we weren't doing and students were gracious enough and faculty were gracious enough to help the institutions understand that. I have to say in recent years, I haven't been told about what we can do to make us more welcoming. So if people in here know of anything, we would like to hear. It's kind of an inverse answer to your question, but. Awesome. But, oh, but I would just say, this mayor makes a good point that's important when we when you ask what we do as presidents, we tend to focus on raising money. 
That is important, but that's probably number two. Number one is answering letters from disgruntled alumni <laughs> about issues as serious as this and as silly as we won't even say. No, say, say, say. Embarrassing. <laughs> and I had an alum recently write and complain that we provided too lavish a lifestyle at St. John's University. And I wrote back and I said, Mary Hall and Tommy Hall, <laughs> question mark. <laughs> Very good, very good. He was, he was probably talking about the Goretzky Center. Uh, no, I think and you're the, right. And the, the fancy Mongolian centennial, <laughs> the centennial All right. commons. All right, this side. Uh, and I just want to point out, so uh, in theory, this, uh, this performance is supposed to be done at 9 o'clock, and, uh, and I'm worried already that we're going to go over. So if we can keep these kind of as, as straightforward as possible. Hi, I'm a first year student here at CSBSGU, and I've heard a lot of talk about the value of first year seminar as a class. After all, it covers subjects such as English and public speaking that many incoming students have already covered in AP and PSEO classes. What can either of you say to attest to the value of FYS, given that we're required to take two semesters of it and that it's often non-transferable to other institutions? Oh, stop it. If you're liberal arts students, take it seriously. It's a good course. The notion that you've learned all you can about English and communication by the time you're a senior in high school AP courses notwithstanding, you don't believe that, do you? You're not going to have all you know about economics or whatever your major is by the time you graduate. So the notion is we're helping you get stronger in those areas and you're getting additional skills that you will then take into other classes and into the workforce. That's why we think first year seminars are a great experience. Is that, do we, should we uh, move on? Or? So the, the two, we move the, on? the five faculty that teach it are clapping. Thank you. Uh, you know, I, I, I would agree with that. I would say and um, I, I hope that you all don't really judge the value of college courses about whether they're transferable or not. That is not to diminish how much they cost, but there's so much about what you get at these places that isn't credit bearing. And so I hope that you can try to break down the barriers between what you're paying for that has credit versus what you're not paying for that doesn't have credit, because you're paying for all of it. Um, and it, it, it should teach you so much more than those things, and I hope it does. And specifically, it teaches you how to take a topic of interest and apply all of those things to it. So I hope that in the end you find it to be a valuable experience. All right, uh, uh, this side. All right, so this question is directed more at um, President Benninger, or Mavs as we call her, um, but President Hemeseth, you I learned this after 10 years. This is really great. <laughs> uh, <laughs> President Hemeseth, you're more than welcome to chime in, but um, as a woman who proudly identifies as strong-willed and opinionated and very vocal, vocal about my beliefs, um, how do you react when people refer to you as a, too assertive or bossy or, <laughs> for lack of a better word, a bitch? How do you respond to that? <laughs> um... You know, fortunately, no one has done that to my face. Um, All kinds of things are happening tonight. Although, um, no, I mean, this is, this is, a, this is um, let me remove it from St. Ben's and St. John's for a minute. I taught for a long time, and I had, I love to teach, and I had really great teaching evaluations. I think there's still some artifactual ones on RateMyProfessor.com, although I don't know if I still survive on there in my um, administrative afterlife. But, you know, on teaching evaluation, students can say what they want, and on the, in the, on the East Coast, they're a lot less polite than they are out here. And I have been called on teaching evaluations a bitch. I have been called on teaching evaluations a bimbo. And I'm having trouble like putting these two things exactly <laughs> together. And I've been called on teaching evaluations a dyke. And the reason I was called that is because people don't know how to handle assertive women. And they make all kinds of implications that they think are derogatory that aren't necessarily derogatory. Um, it's more about the person who uses that language than it is the person that they're using the language against. And so um, I would say, you know, if, if people call me that sticks and stones, I'm really proud and I hope that I don't want the women at St. Ben's to emulate me as individuals, but I want to provide the space for them to be as bossy and loud and aggressive as they want, as long as there's something of substance behind it. And as much as people might um, 
reflect on my bossiness. By the way, there's a whole uh, kind of movement um, started by Sheryl Sandberg um, at Google to uh, stop people from calling women bossy. But as long as people also think there's something of substance behind it, you know, oh well, because what's really important is what's the character behind that that, you know, affects leadership. Okay, very good. Yes. For the St. Ben's president, uh, I hear you're leaving for other opportunities, and I just want to know what kind of policy you're leaving at St. Ben's for the current housing issue when more and more upperclassmen are forced to live on campus when it doesn't make economic sense for them. Um, first of all, just to clarify your first point, I'm not leaving St. Ben's for other opportunities. I'm leaving St. Ben's to go back to the East Coast where my family is, and um, I'm not ready to stop my career. And why is that distinction important to me? Because St. Ben's and St. John's are very special places, and I, I wouldn't choose to leave them just to go somewhere else. But, so I just wanted to clarify that. And the second half of your question was about the housing requirement. Um, we, we instituted the four-year residency, um, actually first at St. John's, one year before St. Ben's, um, for reasons that had to do with housing availability and things. And I think it's been about, well, you, you all would know, maybe four years at this point. Are the seniors under the housing requirement now? Yes? Yes. Um, and we believe that it's the right thing to do for your education. And um, you have choices of where to go, and you can choose to go somewhere without a residency requirement. We believe it makes these communities richer, that it increases the retention, that um, it, it increases the academic engagement of students to stay on campus. You think at, at, um, at first glance, you think it's more economically feasible for you to live off campus, and perhaps as an individual it is. But if we had an open living, and this is kind of incidental to the real point of why we do this, but if we had an open living off campus policy, it wouldn't be cheaper because we would have to raise your tuition because we have to support the facilities that we have. So to have empty residence hall facilities is not um, on balance the most economical thing for the institution to do, and that would kick back and um, have an impact on your tuition while on an individual basis it might be more economically, um, it might seem better as at an individual level. I'll let the economist speak to that point, well, but. Well, I mean, I, I would agree with everything Marianne just said. I think that the main thing is it's, there's a trade-off here. I mean, we recognize that some, some students want to live off campus. Our view is that the sense of community that's created by having a four-year residency requirement uh, is worth that imposition. We try to be upfront about this when you come to St. Ben's and St. John's, so by the time you get to be a senior, we hope it's not a surprise, um, but we think that... What? Well, <laughs> for some people it is, um, but we really think that that sense of community is important, and it ties back into our Benedictine history. There's, there's an economic piece to this, but that's absolutely secondary. It's all about community and what we think about the quality of life for students on campus. At St. Ben's, we get far more calls of complaints of students who want to live on campus and can't get into, um, there's because there's not enough space in the senior residence halls than we do people who petition to get off campus and can't. So I'm not exactly sure how the, the actual data match up with um, individual people for whom this is a real issue as opposed to the community as a whole. Okay, so it is nine o'clock and we're supposed to be done and I want to get back to the cast of the theater public policy. So could we do, uh, we just gonna go back to them. Uh, but you guys are gonna be at our cookie reception, right? That's a thing here. Cookies? Is, that, is it the cookie reception? Somebody told me that's what it's called. Uh, yeah, so cookie, re I just started a new thing. Uh, cookie reception uh, will be after this and you both will be able to be there for a little while and so you can answer these folks' questions, I hope. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for... All right, yes, thank you. So. Thank you, guys. So, uh, so without further ado, uh, we're going to turn it back over to the cast of the Theater of Public Policy. Please, big round of applause for them. Mom? Son? I'm failing my class on being assertive. Son, look me in the eyes. Stand up.
a sort of stance. No, shoulders. No. Oh, wobbly. Where's that backbone I instilled in you? I just don't have it. I don't have any leadership and I'm not bossy. Mr. CEO, we've got to fire a thousand people. Can you deliver a message to the masses? I guess. Okay, <laughs> the microphone's ready. Hey, everybody. Uh, I... All right, congratulations, you're a father. I just need you to cut the umbilical cord now. I don't know if I can do that. You, <laughs> you, you just have to pick up the scissors and cut. Really? That's, that's all? That'd be great, because I'm getting blood all over my hands. Dad, I'm 17. Cut it off, please. <laughs> Hi, uh, there's a, a housing requirement, and I, I know I'm... Whoa! Well, I, <laughs> you, I've been guys, here for a thousand can, days. I had no idea. Well, the, the weirder thing is I'm, I'm a 55-year-old alum, and I want to move back in. <laughs> you go outside this bubble, and you have to pay for everything. Listen, it's, it's okay. Hold on a second. Man, he's got, like, some Pink Floyd... Posters and and this Jethro Tull shirt. He doesn't know. Okay. No, no. He's not. He's gonna bust up all the ladies. I know. If they could come here, but they don't come right, here at right, night. Right, no, right, no, right, no, no. Right. All right. I don't know if you guys heard, but Christine McVie is joining Fleetwood Mac again. <laughs> okay. I heard. Ah! <laughs> I heard words, but they didn't make a sentence for me. That's okay. Look, I'm willing to take the bottom bunk on the loft. What? We can. We could trade him our dorm for his off-campus house. It has a kitchen. Yeah, but it, it had this thing with initials like a V and an S and an H, or v, uh, VHS. You stick things into it, and then it, it plays stuff back, kind of. <laughs> I it. have these really great speakers. They're eight feet tall. <laughs> and they plug right into the record player. <laughs> no woofer or tweeter. Do you, do, you, do you have your own car? Well, I do have a car. It's a sedan. It suit, it's uh, seats eight. <laughs> so you could take us from here down the highway. Yeah, yeah, no bus, no bus! Sure. <laughs> You're in! Yeah! Woo! Woo! <laughs> Are you ready to get sustainable? I am! <laughs> <laughs> All right, we gotta cut a few things because we gotta make this place better than it was when we found it. All cost effective. So let's just take a look at the list. All right. Plastic water bottles. Plastic oh, water bottles. No. We can't have those anymore. We're going to have to have those little refill stations at the drinking fountain. Uh, free trees for everyone. Oh, no. No. I don't no. think that chainsaw's electric. I got two pizzas from the cafeteria. Oh, oh, in the garbage. Yeah. <laughs> All right, no throwing pizzas from the reef in the garbage. No cutting down trees. No plastic that, bottles. I, I. Well, that's it. Yeah. We just, just saved the world. Just did our part. Well, with that, I mean, we can pay ourselves. That's right. And you get a dollar, and I get a dollar? Uh, 75 cents. <laughs> you know how you were complaining about how we don't have it really good here? I, I was just over at St. Fans. They don't have trays. What? In the cafeteria. <laughs> Then how do they sled down the hills? And how do they overeat? <laughs> I should tell you, I'm not really a monk. I just wear this robe. <laughs> I understand. Thank you. I'm not really a monk either. I'm just chilly. Good. <laughs> You know, there's not a lot for monks to do outside of this school, as far as I know. Well, there's always tray sledding, which is French for very sledding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I took Spanish. Jack, I finished the plans for the monorail. It's going to cost a billion dollars. We just need to find one really rich contributor. I have a billion dollars. I, I, I'm willing to contribute. Well, I can just snap my finger. Well, get, 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 get out your pocket. He's got a billion dollars ready. Just write you a check. A lot of zeros. <laughs> certainly. Oh, an extra comma. There you are. I always miss those. <laughs> All right. 
Now, would you like it called yeah. anything? Your name on the monorail? Yes. I would like it called Flaptastics, the train that goes okay. That's what my grandfather called his train when he played with them as a kid. He said on his deathbed, son, if you ever come into a billion dollars and throw it away on a monorail, name it after my train. And then he died. He died mid-sentence? Died mid-sentence. So there could have been more, but I don't know. Tray. Tray. I mean, it maybe meant French for very. I don't know. <laughs> I'm a disgruntled alum. This place is too welcoming. Look at all these people. Yes, they're all so friendly, so welcoming. Yes, you are very disgruntled. Perhaps you should not donate. I'm not going to donate. Perhaps you should keep your vast money for yourself. I will. You're a wise troll. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I live in the forest. The forest between St. Ben's and St. John's? I hear they're putting a monorail there. That's too lavish! Ooh, I should haunt you. I mean, Mary Hall is where I live, and Tommy Hall is also where I live, where I haunt them and make them For you! Look, if you think I'm gonna give you some money to keep doing this, you're right! Ah, thank you! It's 77, oh, it's, wow. I don't know anything about trolls, apparently. I didn't know you were <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been stuck in mental management for about 15 years now. We've all been there, haven't we? <laughs> I've been driving the same CRV since 1999. Ladies and gentlemen, this man elected <laughs> not to take first year seminar. <laughs> I wanted to speak gooder, <laughs> but I didn't need to, because I finished that back in that school thing I went to. He also didn't marry a Benny or a Johnny. <laughs> Weak-willed, independent, drives a sedan. I don't know what kind of monster could be worse than that. I'm from St. Thomas. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, I'm so confused. I got my, I got my evaluations from my students. They called me a bimbo. Me too. <laughs> God. I wore too many pastels this semester. <laughs> I was wearing espadrilles, which are women's shoes in French. Sounds très bien. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I mean, I... Dr. Robinson, you need to lean in. I just read this book. It's, it's delightful. <laughs> yeah. It's by a lady from Facebook. Oh, uh -huh. I've heard of the Facebook. Yes. <laughs> to, ex see, so what she's trying to do is outlaw the word bossy for us men. Well, I've hardly been bossy. I'm a bimbo. <laughs> Perhaps you're taking it too much to heart. Perhaps you need to... Lean in more. I'll be bossier. Do the reverse Sandberg. Terrible. Your class is awful. You assign too much homework. Well, you're mean. You don't have to turn in your paper. Oh, that's not what I meant to say. <laughs> what would Cheryl Sandberg say? Turn it in and footnote it. <laughs> On my desk. APA style. The comma goes inside between the name of the author and the date, and the period is after the parentheses. Warn it! <laughs> it's not that hard! What a bitch. <laughs> Okay, college is hard for everybody, but you just gotta pick yourself up when it gets too complicated. You'll do it. You're having a tough time? Why don't you just lean in a bit? 
I can't do it. You I can't. I can't do it anymore. What out of the four of us is going to marry a Benny? It won't be me. I'm LGBT. <laughs> and I'm glad I'm here. I could have married, could have married a Benny, but I didn't have the wherewithal to go out after dark. Not at all. And you, why didn't you marry us? All of us. Once in the last ceremony that is near. Oh, why, sir? I looked for true love, look for true love, and I did not find it amongst these six mile radius long nine. Did no. you ride the bus? I walked. What? Why did I walk? <laughs> I forgot about the link. the link. Boy, didn't I stink. I'd marry you, and we'd have a lot of laughs. What? But eventually, we both get frustrated. Very much. So let's just be friends. I like that, Hutch. Thanks. You? My name. I think we found the one for you. It's him. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Gonna marry Benny! <laughs> Robinson, Brandon Boats, Carmen O'Halloran, Logan Martin, Joshua Will. My name's